Amen. It's really good to be um, together with you. I've been looking forward for, for this for, for a long time. And as you saw there, I uh, married one wife, four daughters. That explains my white hair. So I'm just trying to be funny. Okay. So, um, but what I would love to share with you tonight is um, if you want to have a title, uh, that is to follow Christ. And, uh, uh, and you have heard that many times to follow Christ. But me, when, when I th- I'm a thinker. So if, if I read a scripture and then I can stop and I think, what does that mean? Uh, how can I live this? And then you, you, you ask the Holy Spirit, you know, to, to lead you into situations that you can, where you can experience the word you're reading. So that actually, it's not just in your head, but it, it just went through your body, you know. You can experience the word, which is uh, what it is, the Bible. It's not a history book. It is the living word of, of the living God. And it speaks to you every time you open the Bible. It will come fresh to you because it's a living word. So when you open the word Bible today and when you read, you have never ever read it in the same way as you're doing when you read it then. Because it's a living word. It's, a, it's, it's living in you. Okay, so, um, but, but if I can start, I just want to start with a story. Because sometimes um, I, I don't think so much on evangelism. I think about the most important thing for me is to, to be led by the Spirit of God. And, uh, and I love the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I know you love the Holy Spirit. Um, and sometimes you can find yourself in a situation and you just know this is God, but you didn't know it in the beginning. So suddenly you are trapped into something and you are out of control. So this was a couple of years ago. I was in the eastern part of Norway and I was going back to Bergen, flying back. And that was when this volcano of Iceland was throwing up all these ash clouds. Remember? So there was no flights. Air traffic was just shut down. Do you remember that? Yeah. So, uh, but I had to go home. So I just went to the airport and I was thinking, well, you never know. So I went to the airport there and there were some people there. And then this lady came and she, and she asked, and, and, and she told me she was a, a journalist from a local newspaper, and she said, can I just make an interview? And I said, yeah, okay, that's okay. No pictures, you can, uh... so, and then she said, so where are you going? Oh, no, I'm going back to Bergen. Yeah, but you're not flying, are you? Well, y- yeah, because <laughs> that's why I'm on at, at the airport. Yeah, but there was no, no traffic, no air traffic. It's just shut down. No, but I think it would be okay today. How do you know that, she said? And now you start to get that feeling that you are in trouble. <laughs> because more people was listening. So, so I said, well, um, yeah, I, I spoke to this, uh, um, we can call him the chief weatherman, chef Smetrologen, <laughs> this morning. And he said it would be okay. I know I was really getting nervous. And she said, so you spoke to this chief weatherman this morning? And he said it would be okay. He, yes, he said it would be okay. But how could you speak to him? And then I started to pray my favorite prayer. Help! <laughs> and then I said, well, actually, I know him. Oh, so you know him? Yes, I know him. Yeah, but how do you know him? I know there was more people listening. How do you know him? And I was really praying. And then, well, actually, I'm, I'm working for him. Or oh, you work for him. And people was listening, and she was writing, and I was like, God, help me out of this. But, and, and, and she never stopped, you know. And then she said, but what do you, how, what do you work with then? So I said, what should I say? <laughs> Evangelist, you wouldn't understand that. So I said, no, 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 I'm a kind of a pastor. Pastor? Oh, and the chief weatherman, and everybody was laughing, you know, and having fun. And my flight went to Bergen. Loving on purpose, huh? So you never know, my God. But what I would like to share with you, I would like to uh, if, read from Matthew 4, verse 19 to 20. Um, and it said, Jesus said to them, Come with me, 
and I will teach you how to catch people. And can I say this? Every time you read about disciples in the Bible, every time you read about Jesus talking to the disciples, just receive it because you and I, we are all disciples of Christ. And I just said, Father, every time you speak to disciples, I will include myself. So Jesus said, um, uh, come with me and I will teach you how to catch people, how to reach people for Christ. And at once they left their net and I went with him. So for me, that is a promise. Jesus is saying that Jesus may not make everybody to be evangelists. Evangelists are just mentioned three times in the Bible and mostly to equip the body of Christ. But we are all fishers of men. We are all, every one of us as Christians are fishers of man. And Jesus said that he will, and listen, this is the guy that never lied. He is the truth. He will teach you and me how to reach out and catch people for Christ. That's the promise. But then we have to give him a feedback. We have to do something. He said, I will teach you this. You follow me. What does it mean for you? to follow Christ. Because if you do, he will, by the Holy Spirit, teach you to reach people. And you can still be yourself. You can still be yourself. Remember, Jesus came to the disciples and he said, follow me. So he came to them and he knew everything about them and he said, Follow me. And they started a journey together. And on that journey, day by day, step by step, they get to know the fisher or man in them and they learn little by little and doing. And Jesus is saying, follow me and I will teach you. And the response was at once. They left the net and they follow him. And then there was another man. Jesus is saying the same thing. Uh, and he said, follow me. And, and, and the man said, yes, Lord, I will follow you. Very clear. I will follow you. But then he said, but first let me. There was a different response. And then Jesus said, anyone, and this is kind of tough, anyone who puts a hand to the plow and then look back is not fit for the kingdom of God. We cannot follow Christ by looking backwards. You cannot drive the car by only looking in a rearview mirror. You can only follow Christ by looking forward. And if you, if you can imagine a ship in a lock, you know a lock, and this big ship, and the ship could be you, or the church, the local church that you are part of, um, or even kind of this organization. And, 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 uh, but the lock is, the ship is there. And I probably, you have a lot of prophetic words over your life or over the church. What God is going to do. Fantastic. So, so the ship is there and God wants to fill the lock with water. Water of God is the blessing. And I'm from Bergen and Norway. I'm so blessed. Hallelujah. I don't know if God is from Bergen, but Noah must be from Bergen. That's clear. Uh, so God wants to fill and he wants to fill the lock and he wants to take the ship he wants to take us up and further so that we can see the kingdom of God be extending but you know what it, God can just pour out so much water but it will not help us if we don't close the door behind us and I don't know about you but I meet so many Christians they are in change they're, they're hold back and, and from the voices from the past, things that happened in the past. And they live in the past or they live in the future, but the only day we can follow Christ, the only day we can serve Christ, the only day we can obe be obedient to the Holy Spirit is today. I don't know about tomorrow. You, could, you cannot survive by food you, was, you ate for two weeks ago. And I find so many people are not free 
because of something happened in the past. Maybe somebody did something towards you. Maybe somebody hurt you. Maybe you have done something towards yourself. And, 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 and we will all be disappointed as long as we, God is using people to build his church. We will always be disappointed on people if you have your trust only in people. So many Christians are hold back. But the thing is, if you need to forgive, forgive. Forgive is not about that you, you, that you will agree with everything that was done towards you. Or, or Forgiveness is a command from Jesus because when you forgive, you are free. Even though the emotions can be, can be you know, still there. But we cannot allow the past to hold us back to follow Jesus today. Amen? And I strongly believe that one of the things that we will experience by the Holy Spirit these days, there will be a breakthrough. People will be set free. Chains will be broken. Things from the past will be healed. And we will be free, free to follow Christ. And the Holy Spirit will give us a great fresh revelation about what it means to follow Christ. Amen? Can I say this? When I was, I believe... I think I can be free with you guys, but I think there was a, I don't know if this is a nickname, Ulla, Ulla. But when I was talking about chains was falling to the floor, I think this is a word for you, or some of you that have been praying for this, this guy with his name, Ulla, that he will be totally free to serve the Lord, and God has opened a door for him, and this is the word from God, let, let go and let God. Let go and let God. Amen. So Jesus wants us to follow him. So I was saying, God, what does that mean? I, I try to be very practical. What does it mean, Jesus, to follow you? And, uh, and then I started to read in the Gospels. Of course, to follow Jesus is to, is to, is to uh, worship, it is to go to the word, it is to eat the word, it is to, to do the things he tells us to do, you know, and, uh, and, and, uh, and come together and fellowship. But certainly I realized, and maybe you have seen this before, but I'm a kind of a simple guy. I started to read the gospel, and certainly I realized that when I read about Jesus' life, when he was walking around, I actually understood, oh no, you're not just reading about the life of Christ. You're reading about your life. When you read about Jesus, when he was walking around, all the things he did, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, but the way he served, the way he suffered, all the things he did, Jesus said that we should do the same things as he did. What does that mean for you? Except from the cross, he did that once and for all. But also we died with him. We were raised from him, with him. We were sat with him in, in heaven. <laughs> Fantastic. But the life he lived. You know, Jesus could have done things in many different ways. But he made himself, when Jesus came to earth, when the word became flesh and blood, when Jesus came, he made, he made a, a very clear decision. He said that I will live my life totally, 100% depending on the Holy Spirit. And that's very interesting because in everything Jesus did, he said, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Everything Jesus did, he did by the Holy Spirit. Because if he had access to something that we have not access to, we could never ever do the same thing as he did. So Jesus is showing you and me the life we are called to live in practical ways when he was walking around. Like in Acts 10, 38, it says, Jesus from Nazareth, who was anointed by God with, with power and the Holy Spirit, went around, he, 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 he doing good, he did good, and he healed everybody who was under the devil because God was with him. But Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. 
And the reason that Jesus could do all the things he did was because God was with him. You are anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. And God is with you. Jesus is demonstrating his life. And he's saying, honor, follow me. Follow me. And in, in, in Luke 19, 10, it says, Jesus came to seek what was lost to save. That's why Jesus came. Jesus came to seek what was lost to save. And Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when Jesus was walking around, he was seeking after people because Jesus loves people. And if you are here today and you have never received Christ, you have never given your life to Jesus, Jesus is seeking after you and that's why you came here. That's why you are here because Jesus wants you to open your life for him so that you can live the life you were born to live. Jesus is seeking. And I love the story You know this woman at the well, Jesus and the disciples had been walking through the desert uh, and they were very tired. So you know what? It's okay to be tired. So Jesus, and they've been walking through the the desert and then the disciples are very hungry so they decide they they want to get food and uh, I don't know why it takes 12 guys to, to buy food for 13 guys. But that's how it is, isn't it? And then Jesus is sitting down at the well. This is the, this is the situation. It's a normal day. And it could be a Monday. You never know. But Jesus is sitting there. He is tired. And now there was a woman coming. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm a bit crazy. But, but when I read stories in the Bible, I, I, I will sit down. I will meditate. I will just imagine I will be a part of I, I I've been at the well so many times watching because I want to learn from Jesus. I want to follow him. So, so, so I'm thinking, Jesus, will you do a miracle now? Great healing. So there can be a revival in the area. And the woman is there. She was a Samaritan. He was a Jew. They shouldn't have any social contact. He was a man. She was a woman. You know, and this is how Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Jesus from Nazareth, this is how we start. Is that can you just give me something to drink? Small talk. And Jesus is saying, follow me. Why do we need to complicate things? Jesus was small talking with that woman. And in that small talking, there was a longing in her life after eternity. Ecclesiastes 3.11, God puts eternity into every man's heart. There is a longing in everyone after eternity. And what do you think happened with that longing when they see you? What does it mean when the word is saying, Christ in you, hope of glory? Don't just read the word like you and Christ. Christ in you is more than just your savior. He is your savior, but he is the savior of the world. It must mean something. When we meet people, then when the word is saying that the Christ in us is hope for people in Denmark, in Norway, in Sweden, Scandinavia, all over the world. Christ in you, it must mean something. And in this conversation, something was going on. Jesus started to talk. He showed interest. He, he, he just looked at this lady. And something is happening. And that something is more than something. It's a person, it is the Holy Spirit that is working in her life. Because Jesus did only what, what he could see the Father was doing. And how could Jesus see what the Father was doing? If we can do the same thing, it must be in the Holy Spirit. And in the Holy Spirit, we can see Christ. In the Holy Spirit, we can know God. But without the Holy Spirit, it's just religion. But we are not religious. We are Christians. We know Christ. We love Jesus. 
And in this conversation, though, he, uh, Jesus is start talking about the living water, and then, and then she came and with this water, the water yard to, to get water, but in this conversation, something happened to her, and then on the end she said, please give me this living water so I don't need to come to this well anymore. And in that moment, Jesus brought come to revelation. He said, go and get your husband. I don't have any husband. Yeah, but you have five husbands before this. And the one you know how is not your own. And she's saying, wow! Do you believe that Jesus was moving in all the gifts of the Spirit? To show us. Follow me. Do the same thing that I did. Jesus had a revelation, and he brought the revelation. And because of that, she just opened, she was so filled, something happened to her, and in the same moment, she left him. Can you imagine? She ran away from him. What happened? Why? I don't know if, what would you have done, but if I, if I met somebody who told me everything, I'd, I would be there and get more. Wow, this is really exciting. But she left him. She left her water yard. She forgot to all needs because what she was thinking of was her friends back in the same village where the disciples had been going to, to buy food. And she was running, 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 Come and see a man, come and meet a man. He told me everything that I have done. He shouldn't be Messiah. What was happening? In that same moment, she said, can, can you give me the living water? Jesus Christ started to seek through her. And she started to think about her family, her friends, people in the neighborhood. And God's strategy for that village to see a breakthrough was not three wise men who was led by their own needs. It was one woman, one woman who was so full of him and allowed him to seek through her. What about us? Are you aware of that you are in touch with hot ripe harvest? What, 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 what is God doing in your neighborhood? What is the Holy Spirit doing? Because the Holy Spirit is active. The Holy Spirit, is, he's active. He, he, he know he's working with people. And you know the Holy Spirit. I hope. The person, the Holy Spirit, that is Christ in us. And he wants to give, and he wants to inform us. He wants to tell us something. He wants to lead us. He wants to guide us, you know, to people. That's why it's so important when, when, when it comes to your relationship and my relationship with the Holy Spirit. More than, more than the gifts, more than the manifestation, which I love. But do we know the person, the evangelist, the Holy Spirit? And no, she is bringing all the people to Christ. It's fantastic. And nearly everybody came to the Lord. But if you go to the beginning, there was a man sitting there and he said, can you give me a glass of water? I have a friend, a plumber. And plumbers, they go to work as normal. So he went to work and he came into a house, what plumbers normally do. And he came into the kitchen and plumbers, they love kitchens. And he came into the small cabin, you know. If I went in there, I would never come out again, you know. But he just loved being in there, and he was working and doing great. Just business as normal, as usual. And then, after a while, this woman who, who is who living in the house said, do you want a cup of coffee? And he said, yes. Evangelism was not even close in the thinking. He was just far, far, far away. So now they're sitting there, and, and they are talking, and they're drinking coffee. And then suddenly she's saying, um, do you know what? I have cancer. And my, the plumber was thinking, why on earth is she telling me that she has cancer? Christ in me, hope of glory. The anointing over us. God is saying that he will pour out the spirit over all flesh. People can sense, people can, there is something with us as Christians. That's why it's so important that we live full of the spirit and obey him. 
But in this conversation, he, she started to share, and my friend, the plumber, could actually be the love of God in flesh and blood towards this lady, just by being there and listen to her. And then she said more and more, and, uh, and my friend said, you know what, I have to go to another work now, but if you want, can I come and see you tonight? And she said, do you really want? Sometimes we think on others' behalf too much, wrongly. Ask them. And we could be surprised again and again. And the, the same night they came back, and that day, that evening, she gave her life to Jesus Christ. She was a local so lead singer in a pop group. And, um, and after a while, her husband got saved. All the musicians in the group got saved. And after a while, they were leading the worship in the church. And around this guy, we saw 14, 15, 60 people giving their life to Christ. Fantastic. But if you go back to the beginning, a plumber saying yes to a cup of coffee. But he is sitting there. And he know the Holy Spirit in me. I can... I can be there. I can be the love of God towards this lady. What about us? Ephesians 2.10. Every day, God has prepared ahead. God has designed every day for you and me. He knows exactly everything he wants to do. And he said there are so many finished things that we can walk into. But you need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. You welcome the day. And, and this is how I do it, you know. Sometimes when I'm in the car, I, I, I'm glad you're not there when I'm alone in the car because I can do a lot of crazy things, you know. I can preach the gospel to myself and sometimes I'm so touched and moon and I want to give my life to Jesus again and again. I, yeah, well, I just want, you know. And I remember one time I was sitting in the car and I was thinking, well, Holy Spirit, can you help me? Just, just teach me something. Well, I just want to, you know. And I started to think, what would happen if somebody called me and I took the phone and, was, and, it was, and they said, oh, sorry, wrong number. Well, this is how I do it, you know. So, uh, so I was, yeah, okay. So I was doing this and I was praying about that. One week later, there was a phone. And I took the phone and I said, Skagen, hello, Skagen. And this lady said, oh, sorry, wrong number. And suddenly... I was thinking, no, I'm just been there. And I said, no, 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 this is not the wrong number. No, 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 no. <laughs> and she said, what do you mean? No, 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 I've been waiting for you to call me. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, what do you mean by that? Well, you know what, I'm a Christian. And last week, I was talking with God, and, and I was just, he, he just told me that somebody maybe will call me. I know you are calling. Can I share something with you? And I did, and I shared my faith, I shared about Christ, and she started to cry because for a long time she had been called by God, and she gave her life to Christ. (laughs) Jesus said, follow me, follow me. If you follow Christ, if you read the Gospels, and you read you know, uh, all the different things Jesus did, go and see the first thing he did when, when he met people. Sometimes it just started to small talk with people. Sometimes there was an act of kindness towards somebody. Yeah, you know, sometimes he healed people. Sometimes there was a miracle. Sometimes it was uh, he turned water into wine, and in Norway it's uh, wine into water, of course. But, but, but Jesus did a lot of things. But in everything Jesus did, please, when you read the gospel, ask the Holy Spirit to open up things that you can really understand. Actually, I can do this. You could be this plumber. You could sit there uh, and, and small talk with somebody. You can be, do something very simple But sometimes it's so simple that we miss it. And we are waiting for God to change us. No, 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 no. Jesus is coming to you today. uh, And he wants us to follow him from where we are. And then we start this process. By being led by the Holy Spirit. And just do the simple thing that he wants to do through us. 
I, I don't know you, about you, how you became a Christian. I don't know if... Hello. Hello. I don't know if you had the angel coming through the ceiling or the roof. And Well, I'm married to an angel, so God used my wife to see me say, but, but most of us heard about Jesus, about normal people. Most of us heard about Jesus Christ uh, through a friend or family, grandmother, grandfather. What about your neighbor who is not Christ, Christian? What about your colleague? What about people that you are working with? And I said, Holy Spirit, can you just help me? Can you just help me so I can be more sensitive? Uh, uh, to, 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 to be aware of when you want me to do something. And sometimes you don't need to hear the voice. If you know a person, like I know my wife, we've been married for 34 years. She doesn't need to talk to me to tell me. She can just look at me. Uh, okay, I know. I, I will. Okay, you know. But so the Holy Spirit, sometimes you can have a prompting. You can be something inside of you. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit is the evangelist. He is the one that will convince people about sin and guilt. The Holy Spirit wants to do things in, in you and me like he did with Jesus Christ. But do you know the Holy Spirit as a person? 2 Corinthians 13, 13. The grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us. I, 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 I love this conversation that I have with the Holy Spirit. Some people will say I'm crazy. Yeah, I am. But you know what? I, I, I have been in places. We have seen so many people say. But they started by a little prompting about the Holy Spirit. A little idea. Something small. And then you just one step. And, and somebody else took some steps. And because of that, we, we saw revival, seen it over and over again. And, and, and I love it. And he speaks to you in dreams, and you know all this. You know, but just like an illustration, there was a, I was in, a, in, a, in, a, in Grand Rapids in the States, and, and I was dreaming. Is it the old man who has visions or the old man who has dreams? Yeah, so I had a vision. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, but I saw this guy digging a well. And, uh, and fresh water came up. And I saw the man and I saw his name, Tom. You could read the name over his head. But so I wake up and, and that could, you know, sometimes you dream strange things. But I said, okay, Holy Spirit, if this is you, I, you know, you must lead me further. A couple of days later, we was a, a preaching there and on a Sunday morning meeting. And suddenly I see this guy in, in, in the middle of the congregation. So I said, Tom. And he said, and I said, <laughs> so, and then I said, you know what, I, I was dreaming about you. <laughs> okay. I was dreaming about you a couple of days ago, nights ago. So, uh, so I said, I saw you standing and you were digging a well and fresh water came up. And, and, and as I was talking, I saw some, like a lot of people around him, people from India. And it was all like waving and celebrating. So I said, uh, so he said, can I just say something? And so he came forward and he said, well, my name is Tom. Uh, this is what I, I'm a professional uh, well digger, you know. And, uh, and last week God spoke to me to go to India. To, um, to, uh, to take a contact with a friend, of, uh, a common friend who was leading a great work in India. To, to dig wells in the villages in the, in, in, the, in the mountains. So they went. He went, Tom went. And then a couple of months later, I got a letter with a picture of thousands of people standing like this. And what happened, it was, uh, so they went up to the village, some of the, in the area where there was a lot of villages in the mountains there. And uh, they were digging a, a, a well. And the day they was opening the well and the water came, uh, one of the Indian uh, leaders for the church in that area started to share the gospel about Jesus who was the living water and 1,500 people gave their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And now we have numbers of churches in that area. 
It started with me having a vision. That was the small part. Tom did a great part. And then there were more people. But it's a fantastic result. But the point is, you're going back to the beginning. And that's my point today, to follow Christ. Don't wait for things. Don't wait for him to change you. But please, ask the Holy Spirit, as I do over and over again, Jesus, help me. What does it mean? Help me to follow you, even when I read about you. Give me faith. Holy Spirit, help me to really to believe that we actually can do the same things as Jesus did and also expect to see the same results. I know he was perfect. I am not close, but, but not, you know. But I love Jesus Christ because if we follow him, where do you think he will lead us? Jesus came to seek those who were lost to save. But he will use your voice. Not the experts. He will use your voice. I'm from Bergen. My English is poor. My accent is terrible, according to my daughters. I don't care. I don't care. I love the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. And I've seen him do the things through me when I just felt I just missed it, you know, and make the mess of everything. But he's bigger than me. Praise God. Praise God. So I will finish soon. But I just want to say this. If you read John chapter 20, verse 21. um, Jesus came to the disciples. Disciples. Us. And he started with this. Peace be with you. Can I just ask you, do you have peace with God? It's so hard to follow him and and, and allow him to use you if you don't have peace. But Christ came and he said, peace be with you. And he even said it one more time. He said, peace be with you. And I just want to proclaim the peace of Christ over every one of us. It's so much easier to hear the Holy Spirit when you have peace. Stop being so disappointed about you. The old you. Jesus did not come to fix it. He killed it on the cross. And you are a new creation. Peace be with you. And then he said this. Um, the way the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And then he was whew, breathing on them. And he said, receive the Holy Spirit. That means Jesus was sent. His origin was heaven. He came for a purpose. And Jesus was baptized. And when he came up from the water, the first thing he saw was an open heaven. And Jesus is saying, follow me. Jesus never left, never left that position. Open heaven means access to God. All the things God has for us. There is an open. Don't close in your thinking what God has opened. And then the next thing was Jesus heard the Father's voice saying, Son, I love you. And I'm so pleased with you. And Jesus is saying, follow me. I love you, my daughter. I'm so pleased with you. Yeah, but I haven't. I'm so pleased with you. I love you, son. What a place to serve Christ and to follow him in our everyday life with peace in heart and knowing God loves us, not because we deserve it, but because he is just fantastic. And then the next thing happened was Holy Spirit came over Jesus and then he was led by the Spirit in a desert. He was driven by the Spirit and he came out from the desert more full of the Holy Spirit. And everything Jesus did was by the Holy Spirit and he is saying, follow me. Follow me. Brothers and sisters, we shall take this continent for Christ. We are not here to go to heaven. We are here to 
just turn this world upside down for Jesus Christ. But I will talk more about that tomorrow morning. But I think it would be very good. First of all, I just want to say this. If you are here and you have never asked Christ to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior, because you have to use your free will, which is the gift from God, you have to tell him. So don't stay against the love of God. But if you have never said yes to Jesus, this is just the best day in your life to receive Christ. And we would love to pray for you. And I would love to pray specifically if you want to receive Christ, you, if you come with friends, but pray and you ask Christ to come into your life. And I know we will have a fantastic baptism later in the week. So uh, hallelujah. Eh? That would be fantastic. But Jesus loves you. And then also it would be good to pray for each other because I know when I was talking about things from the past, I think some of us, we need to make clear decisions. I had uh, not the best connection with my dad when I grew up. But I came to a point and I realized it's my responsibility to forgive him. And when I did, I was free, he was free. And the last 10 years of his life, he was just crying of joy when I shared about thousands of people receiving crying. It was just, it was just fantastic. Don't let the past hold you back. Amen? Amen. So it would be good to pray. And uh, I know there are so many good people here that want to pray for you. So uh, thank you. And the grace of Jesus. And the love of God. And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with you in your everyday life. When you go to work in your neighborhood, when you go to job, the fellowship, the communion with the Holy Spirit. Amen.